The CIA is reported to have concluded the Saudi Crown Prince ordered the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. Where does the finding leave Saudi-US relations? Where does it leave the fate of Mohammed bin Salman? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Sami Zaydan. It's what many have suspected ever since Jamal Khashoggi disappeared in Istanbul six weeks ago. The Washington Post says the CIA has concluded the Saudi Crown Prince did give the order to kill the Saudi journalist who'd criticized Mohammed bin Salman. The American spy agency isn't commenting on the reports and the Saudi embassy in Washington says the CIA assessment is false. Mike Hanna has more from Washington, D.C. In recent days, a number of members of Congress have demanded that Mohammed bin Salman be held accountable, either by way of tweets or in the case of Senator Bob Corker during a debate about Yemen in the Senate. I've asked for a high-level briefing with Mattis, Pompeo and Gina Haspel to come in as soon as we get back to share with us what is happening uh, with Saudi Arabia on both fronts, both Yemen and what is happening uh, as it relates to the journalist who was assassinated, in my opinion, at the direction of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Now the Washington Post reports the CIA has concluded that the Saudi Crown Prince ordered the assassination of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. This, it says, according to people familiar with the matter, who spoke on the condition of anonymity. The report says... In reaching its conclusions, the CIA examined multiple sources of intelligence, including a phone call that the Crown Prince's brother, an ambassador to the U.S., had with the journalist before his murder. Khalid bin Salman was quick to deny the allegation, saying on Twitter, I never talked to him by phone and certainly never suggested he go to Turkey for any reason. I asked the U.S. government to release any information regarding this claim. Within hours, several other news organizations, including the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, were also quoting anonymous officials confirming the report of the CIA's finding. Although it is very important, it's very significant uh, that uh, what the Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, uh, CNBC and, and other outlets over the past uh, hours uh, have reported that the CIA internal assessment now uh, is pointing its fingers uh, at Mohammed uh, bin Salman as having ordered uh, this operation. This has never happened before. The CIA will probably will not comment on this kind of uh, uh, report. However, uh, the Washington Post uh, wouldn't report uh, this unless they were accurately reporting what the CIA they believe the CIA said. So, which is a slight nuance. Now, one can anticipate that the Congressional Oversight Committees will um, have been briefed or demand to be briefed on this. The reports alleging Mohammed bin Salman's involvement are likely to fuel even further congressional demands that punitive measures be taken against the Crown Prince and his government. The question is whether the president has been briefed by the CIA on its reported conclusions, and if so, whether he would be prepared to back away from his stated reluctance to take action against the Saudi government and its leaders. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington. Now to our panel, we have joining us in Boston by Skype, Glenn Carl, former career CIA officer and the former deputy national intelligence officer for transnational threats. And Scott Lucas, a professor of American studies at the University of Birmingham in Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Let me start with Glenn. So how does the CIA typically investigate and reach a conclusion like this without getting you to, you know, obviously speculate on what the CIA actually has? Right. Well, I, I don't need to speculate at all uh, on how the process uh, functions since I did it from the lowest level up to the, up to the very uh, top for my career. A, a t what we call as a tasking, it will be an, a request for information will come, or we may develop it ourselves. Who ordered the killing of Khashoggi, for example? And then it's sent out to all of the conceivable 
um, parts of the intelligence community, not just the CIA, to human sources, which is what I spent my career uh, working on, or to technical sources, be they from uh, satellites or telephone uh, taps or interviews, open source, media, and so on. Each report is then sent back, and each report is evaluated multiple times by the person who collects it. I think that this is reliable, and here is why, and by the people who receive it, who say, I don't think this is reliable, and here is why. All of that then is collated and uh, evaluated, and once again, the uh, evidence or the reports are, are assessed for reliability, substantiation, corroboration. And then a, a grade is given to, uh, to the assessed intelligence. Only then is it considered finished intelligence. You, you mentioned the grade. Let up. me jump in there, Glenn. What sort of grade has the CIA given to this uh, sort of conclusion that Mohammed bin Salman ordered the killing, from what we know at least from the leaks? Well, it's as confident as it's possible to be. I don't think you will ever, even if uh, you were standing in front of me and I were touching you, I'd probably say... Uh, my assessment is that I am touching you. I mean, it's never, uh, uh, nothing is ever certain or stated as such, but this is quite categorical. Uh, there's no doubt uh, in the collective mind of the intelligence community in the United States that uh, MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, ordered the murder of Khashoggi. The, the, the way it is presented uh, publicly is as uh, firm and confident as the intelligence community in the United States can be. You mentioned there the way it's presented. Let me take this point to Scott. How credible will this report be seen? And credibility and, and perception of credibility, of course, is everything, isn't it? Well, of course, the Saudis <clears throat> will say it's not credible. And indeed, the brother of MBS, Prince Khalid, has already gone on social media to say vociferously that this is untrue. The question is how it plays around the world. And here, I think there's two things that are significant. One is, is that up to now, a lot of the reports about how high this might go within Saudi Arabia had relied on Turkish intelligence intercepts, especially surveillance of the Saudi consulate where uh, Mr. Hasoji was murdered. The leaks today indicate that the CIA is making this assessment based on its own intelligence intercepts, especially electronic intelligence. So there is more than one source that they are using for this. And the second thing is that the CIA is being very careful here to say they're not saying that MBS, they have anything that has him saying, go kill Khashoggi. There's nothing that directly says that. Instead, what they're basing this on is the fact that this type of operation, in their estimation, could not have been carried out without his approval. And secondly, that they have intercepts in which those who carried out the murder were calling back to Riyadh and saying, tell the boss, MBS, that this has been done. Do you think, Scott, that we might get some kind of official confirmation at some point um, about what's been reported in the CIA conclusion, in the, perhaps in the form of Gina Haspel speaking in front of Congress or, or, or another way? Not at this point. I mean, right now, first of all, the internal dynamics, Gina Haspel doesn't go public. I mean, Gina Haspel, although she was in Turkey conferring with the Turks, she reported back uh, to the White House, but she said nothing publicly herself. Now, the second reason why I think we don't get anything at this point is because of the, the split within Washington. The CIA, the State Department, the military are lined up against Donald Trump and his inner circle, notably his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Trump and Kushner do not want any blame placed on MBS, uh, even, a, well, an hour ago. Donald Trump said, we rely on the Saudis for business. We rely on the Saudis for jobs, which indicates that he's not going to take any notice of this. So, no, the reason why this has been leaked to the media is precisely because the CIA knows it cannot get official backing at this point from the Trump administration for its conclusion. That was going to be precisely my next question. Let's take it to Glendo and say, um, why have we seen this leaked out and apparently within an hour to many media sources. To your mind, Glenn, as someone who knows how the CIA works, what does that tell you of the CIA's thinking? Well, I, I'd make two uh, observations, and, and I don't know the uh, answer, of course. I'm, I'm basing this on my, my past experience. But uh, normally, 
uh, leaks on intelligence matters come from Capitol Hill, from congressmen, and in particular from staffers to elected officials, uh, far more frequently than uh, from the CIA itself. It is true, I think, although I can't prove this, that the very top level of the CIA will, uh, will leak uh, sometimes. Um, so I would still suspect that uh, people on the Hill who have been briefed are the more likely um, origins of the information. However, the second point, I think, is the most relevant one uh, to the issue we're discussing, and that is that the intelligence community has been placed in a, a nearly impossible and existential uh, challenge and crisis uh, with the uh, uh, assuming of power of, of Donald Trump and his entourage, because uh, it, we're sworn to try to present the truth as we understand it and the facts uh, and to uh, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. And when you have uh, your your uh, leader, your chief executive, uh, denying the uh, validity or the uh, honesty, the integrity, and the the competence of the uh, institutions, that makes the job hard. And in particular, when there is overwhelming evidence of uh, collusion between members of the entourage uh, now governing the country with a foreign hostile foreign power, which uh, then con those conclusions then are denied. It makes the intelligence officers, uh, puts them in an, an impossible situation. How can you serve an executive who uh, is undermining the oath that you were sworn to preserve and protect? So the solution uh, seems to have been, uh, for many, and it's not much of a solution, but it's the, the least bad case uh, way forward, perhaps, is to leak information about facts as we understand them, uh, and hoping that the truth can set you free, as is written on the uh, walls of the CIA. Scott, um, we know that, uh, according to the reporting at least, the CIA has shared its findings with Congress. Do you think that's going to prompt Congress to take, to push for a tougher line against Saudi Arabia? I think that's what we look next in terms of the arena, arena the political arena. Some congressmen, even before Mr. Hasoji's murder, wanted to put pressure on the Saudis. We've had individual cases of ammunition and munitions being held up, being suspended by uh, committee action in Congress. Those congressmen, I think, will be reinforced in the notion that Saudi Arabia needs to be pressured not only over Mr. Hasoji, but also over the Yemen civil war and the Saudi and UAE role in it. And also the Saudi and UAE should also be pressured over the split, the blockade against Qatar. Now, the question we have is how many congressmen and are they in influential positions? This process would start probably with committee hearings. Uh, you mentioned the hypothetical right now that Gina Haspel might be called. I don't think it'd be Gina Haspel, but let's say Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis. And if those he hearings got enough publicity, the idea would be this would generate more drive to try to contain the Saudis. But I'm not certain we're gonna get that far, partly because we're in a period before the next Congress is seated. And I think partly because even amongst the CIA and the agencies, the sentiment is not to remove MBS, but more to contain him. Look to try to use this as leverage to get some type of negotiations over the Yemeni civil war, and also some type of pressure on Saudi Arabia to ease the blockade and maybe even lift it on Qatar. What about the White House though, Scott? Do you expect the White House to try and resist any pressure from Congress? Absolutely. I mean, the White House, for example, for months resisted sanctions against Russia, given Donald Trump's affinity for Vladimir Putin, but they did finally have to give way. The White House will probably counter-brief, counter-spin against this and say that they're not convinced or that the intelligence is not rock solid. But then you've got a power struggle within the agencies that, as Glenn has mentioned, has been there since the start of the Trump administration. So it's really going to be a question of I don't think getting Donald Trump online, you'll never get Donald Trump in line, but more rather whether you can get all the agencies together, whether you can get support from Congress, and you contain Donald Trump, you contain Jared Kushner, and you try to get some sensible way forward on American foreign policy. The two individuals to look to for that, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis. All right, let's take those points back to Glenn. So, Glenn, if we have this sort of scenario which everyone expects of continued resistance from the White House to take any sort of tougher approach towards Saudi Arabia beyond what uh, the White House has already done. 
How do you think intelligence agencies like the CIA might deal with that sort of situation? Well, I think, I think uh, Scott uh, put it pretty well. Uh, there, you won't get uh, substantive uh, agreement or action from the White House. Uh, you might have the White House constrained, Trump constrained to accept or at least put his signature on a, a sanction, for example. But then he wouldn't give it any life, which is what he did with Russia. Uh, he will pay lip service, uh, say something, and then change the uh, subject and simply ignore it. Uh, anyone who works in uh, in a federal bureaucracy or probably any institution uh, learns early on, as I did, uh, that if uh, you receive an, an order that you uh, think is uh, ill-advised or you don't want to do, you put it in the bottom of the inbox. And then when your boss says, what's happening, you say, I'm right on it, sir. And then you go on and do something else. And it's very difficult to move uh, a large institution like that. I think this is essentially what Trump will do with more bloviating, bombast, and changing of the subject. Might the CIA share these findings, these reported findings, with other allies? Might that uh, be a, a way to increase global pressure, uh, not only on Saudi Arabia, but for the US, for the White House to act too? Uh, broadly speaking, I think the answer is yes. I think that's a good point. Uh, the, what's called the five eyes, the, the five closest allies of the United States, uh, to allies, uh, from World War II, whose uh, close relationship has continued, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the U.S., uh, probably would have um, routine uh, um, access. There would be procedures where uh, information of this sensitivity would likely be shared because of overlapping interests, and probably with other close allies, too, to some extent. Certainly, the conclusions would be shared. Uh, the sources uh, almost never. Uh, but that uh, the information would be shared, yes, uh, and then what other countries do with it, um, who knows? Who knows indeed, Scott? Do you, what do you think? Ultimately, what does this reported finding mean for Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince? It means, it does not mean he is gone. Uh, that turns more on internal Saudi dynamics. Uh, Mohammed bin Salman has succeeded in consolidating power last year where it's very hard for anyone inside the monarchy to mount a challenge as long as the king decides that he wants his son to stay in place, which appears to be the case right now. What it does more broadly, however, is it puts pressure on Saudi Arabia from multiple angles in terms of what it is doing in the region. It puts pressure on Saudi Arabia, as I mentioned before, to try to join or support the talks, which we expect at the end of the month on the Yemen crisis. It puts pressure on Saudi Arabia to try to stop the split within the Gulf countries. It puts pressure on the UAE as well as Saudi to ease back on a hard line. And it boosts the Turks as they try to get more of a regional influence, including fencing over things such as the Syrian crisis. However, there's one caveat to this, because the Saudis have one card to play against this attempt to contain both MBS and contain both their policy. And that is, as long as the US is committed to regime change in Iran, the Saudis have got leverage back against Washington because they could always, for example, threaten to cut their oil output, and therefore you might see a price spike, which would undermine the American strategy against Tehran at this point. Glenn, what do you think the consent... Oh, go ahead. Uh, if I could just jump in and, and I think add... Please uh, do. Uh, to, ..to that. Uh, I, I agree with everything that uh, Scott said. Uh, I do think... I don't think this will lead to MBS's being removed. That No, not at all. That's an internal thing. His power is, cons is uh, consolidated and so on. However, um, since World War II, the United States has, uh, has bet on uh, Saudi Arabia and the Sunni in the, in the great game of power in the Middle East. Uh, President Obama shifted that. It was a historic shift. And uh, without choosing the Shia and Iran, uh, did try to uh, have more equipoise in our in our policy. Uh, Trump has gone back on that viscerally because he's accepted, for whatever reasons, the uh, uh, a strongly hostile posture towards Iran. This uh, MBS is uh, ordering the murder of uh, a person in the consulate of Saudi Arabia, which is just an incredibly moronic operation from every perspective. Um, uh, does, it make, it does it make the establishment in the US, Glenn, uh, view Mohammed bin Salman 
still as an asset or more of a sort of volatile, perhaps even threat? Well, a harder ally to uh, stay very uh, close with and get in bed with, yes. And it may, uh, it certainly will give some um, ammunition to uh, elements of the U.S. government or the uh, or the uh, foreign policy community uh, who don't wish to align us so reflexively with Saudi Arabia, since they seem they've proven themselves to be very uh, uh, unstrategic and unwise in many of their choices. But Trump is the president, and uh, he, uh, for reasons good and bad, mostly bad, um, has identified Saudi Arabia as the way to uh, work towards uh, pressuring and destroying Iran. So that's unlikely to change, but it makes it harder. The assassination makes that harder now. Scott, you both said um, that you don't think this is going to lead to the unseating of Mohammed bin Salman, but does it increase the pressure on the Saudi king to perhaps limit his powers in some way, do you think, Scott? I think there'll be a bit of containing of Mohammed bin Salman. I think, for example, you'll see certain councils within the monarchy and the Saudi uh, state will be expanded to kind of dilute his influence over that. I think you will see probably the king uh, take maybe more of a role in terms of decision making, as he did indeed this summer when he openly uh, split from MBS on a question regarding Palestine. And I think you'll also see pressure eased on a number of the princes and businessmen and the elite that, remember, only uh, a few months ago were arrested and tucked away in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel as MBS tried to make himself the one and only power in Saudi Arabia. I think that effort to centralize power in his hands, while it will not disappear, I think it will be checked a bit. Where that goes from there, however, the Saudi politics are a complexity even beyond my pay scale. And there are so many moves that are going to be made from multiple angles at this point that the idea of a significant change in MBS's position won't be happening in the near future. Glenn, from the perspective of the intelligence community, why do they think there is so much resistance from the White House to put pressure on Saudi Arabia and to protect the U.S.-Saudi relationship? Uh, well, there you're asking an intelligence officer, an American intelligence officer, to, to assess American politics. And, and of course, we are, we are supposed to receive our instructions and salute and say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Uh, conservatives, Republicans uh, have uh, strongly identified with Saudi Arabia. Uh, one could uh, argue that this is because solely because of uh, astronomical uh, contributions by Saudi uh, elements uh, to uh, companies and to uh, pol political figures. Uh, but then there's the, the broader um, realist uh, or strategic assessment that Saudi Arabia is necessary for the stability of the Middle East and that the Sunni on the whole uh, uh, are not uh, revolutionary uh, powers as Iran is. I don't, I think the assessment, frankly, has been, except in conservative circles in the United States, for a long time now, that Iran is not a revolutionary power. It is an expansionary power seeking at least regional influence right. um, in a way that it didn't before. All right. But <clears throat> there's this debate between support the Sunni, support the Shia. Is Iran destabilizing or should we try to contain it by working with it? That, that's, that's the debate. And Trump has his reflexive motivations, which appear to be largely based on earning money for himself. All right. It's been a fascinating discussion. We'd love to chat more about it. I'm sure we'll get another opportunity, though, in the days ahead for now. Let's thank our guests very much, Glenn Carl and Scott Lucas. Thank you, too, for watching. You can see the show again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, head over to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Sami Zaydan, and the whole team here for now, it's goodbye.